four years or so when they're playing, so I'm going to try to give you as much as I can. And in the next like 10 minutes, I'll take some questions at the end. Primary stance, secondary stance. All right. Secondary, you want to run around base and two strikes, no matter what. As the kids get older, every time there's an off-speed pitch, they'll try to be in secondary stance as well. Uh, the difference, super easy. Here's my primary stance. Nobody on base, right here. <laughs> Throwing hand behind my back foot. Here's my secondary stance. A little wider, my butt is up. Give it a good target. We're going to give it a good target. We'll show the glove, inside the glove. And then we're going to relax our hand when the pitcher's getting ready to deliver. All right, so if I'm right here, I'm giving a target, I'm stiff. My, my form is stiff. All right, tight muscles, stiff muscles, or slow muscles. We want to show that target. Relax, we've got soft muscles so we can be quick and beat the ball to the spot. Those are our two stances. The younger kids that I have, I tell them every time a commercial comes on TV, get off your butt, off the couch, and get in your secondary stance for the 90 seconds. The only way they'll get comfortable being in that position, because it's an uncomfortable position, is to practice it. All right, um, so now I'll get into some receiving with you guys. Actually, Dan, would you, can you toss? Sit you over here? Perfect. So we're just going to do a couple drills. We'll do soft hands first. Dan will go little balls. Then we'll go tennis balls. So they're like receiving progressions. You know, I know it is difficult with the younger kids, but you want to try to make the baseball easier. Make the baseball easier, go ahead. So we're just going to go soft hands. Basically track the ball in, fingers on top, bum underneath, good, One. always try to track the ball with my eyes. So if the ball's here, I'm not just going to catch here, I'm going to ankle sway and try to get it with the eyes. Then we'll go to tennis balls, let's go a couple of these, same thing, fingers on top, thumb underneath, you'll get kids to do this, that's wrong, as we get older this is going to our left knee and our glove side knee is going to be tough. Very difficult to catch baseball to so our left knee. We want to kind of keep this knee, the elbow free of the knee. All right. Then after that, we'll go to baseballs. And we'll move on up the ladder. Then we'll go, that's soft hands with no glove. Then we'll go glove on. Baseballs, throwing a little firmer around the world. Try to get all the fringes of the strike zone so they can get the feeling of fingers on top, thumb underneath, ankle swing, sticking the pitch. Um, after that, let's see, we got, it's super tough because they're young, but we'll go rapid fires. Dan, if you just go, toss me two at a time, you know, sideways kind of. So let's do catch drop, catch drop, working on our hand-eye coordination, reaction time, and visual tracking. So we'll go rapid fire, catch drop, boom, all right. So you can do that with the little balls. I prefer probably the, the baseball size, especially for the younger kids. That's a little more difficult. And just try to catch the ball. I know they're, what, nine, what are they, six, seven? Five, six, five, six. Catch the ball, try to just teach, catch the ball. We don't want to be a fetch. We don't want to go have to get the ball every time. Runner gets on base, when you guys get, when they get older, then boom, after two pitches, they'll be on third, all right? Um, old school was the least skilled or athletic kid would be behind a plate. That's not the case anymore. You turn on TV, the catchers are probably the best shaped athletes on the field. Same goes trickle down to minor league ball, to college ball, all the way down. Um, so try to give, not that you have to have your best player behind the plate, you should probably keep your better players in the middle of the field. Short, catch, pitch, you know, that way they can kind of own most of the game. Um, blocking at that, that age is super difficult. We're gonna do a three ball drill first. Just to get them to fall. So three ball drill, this is like hitting off a tee. And you'll just say, all right, middle ball, and you'll kick your feet out and get back and block. Alright? And you'll you'll go to an angle. You want to get them to go glove first, hit a second. Alright? Get into that good angle is perpendicular. After that, probably we'll do <clears throat> uh Dan, you wanna roll me some bowling ball? So bowling ball, this drill is it's like side toss, I tell the kids when they hit. They need to be able to fall down. Get confident falling down and trying to block the baseball. So we'll be here. I'm not going to move too fast from here. So I'm going to beat the ball to the spot. He's going to roll it. Then I'm going to fall. I'm going to beat the ball to the spot. So go one at a time. I'm not going to hop down and just rip my pants. Sorry, guys. Uh, but that, that's another drill. So third lead up we'll do, and this is the good one where people say, oh, I get paid to throw baseballs at kids, which I do, is preset blocks. So we'll be down like this, you just give me a short hop. I'm going to breathe out as the ball bounces into me. 
visually track and tuck my chin. The biggest thing is having young kids tuck their chin and not do this. There's no gear in the back, no gear on the side, there's gear on the front. They need to get used to getting hit. If they're gun shy, go to tennis balls. Then you're not going to throw it harder and then they see they get confident they're getting hit and they're not getting hurt. After that will be flips. So we'll give a target and our preset block stance. We'll throw a short hop, you can give me a short hop. And then I'll flip it and get over just to get the kids into this movement. Boom. Because right. a lot of kids will just stand there. Young kids, and I have a phys ed teacher background, young kids will watch the person. They have trouble tracking it. So the more things that you can do lead up drills where they can really work on their tracking, the better. Don't just go, all right, here you go, first drill, catch it. Boom, we're throwing from the mound and they're trying to block. It's just not going to happen. Really got to break the skill down and work on visually tracking stuff where they can kind of control. Three ball drill, they can control. Bowling ball, they can control. Short one hops, they're kind of, they can kind of control it. All right, so the better you do that, we just don't want to, we want kids to love the position and then they love the game. They resent the position, they're going to resent the game. Uh, we want to keep our kids in playing, uh, use it as a vehicle for life. So I guess at that point, I'll take any questions. I kind of went too long over there. I couldn't really get them any time for questions. So any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, not necessarily that, but as they get older, are you teaching them to keep the hand behind the back? Or no? So Good question. Nobody on base, bare hand behind the foot. In case they have to move, it's a little closer right here. All right, instead of being back here, they're kind of two up right, right here. Runner on base, I go bare hand in my hip, okay? Bare hand in my hip. Kids used to do this. I mean, when I was growing up, I would be in the it would be kind of behind here, but in the middle. All right, in my hip, it kind of gets covered when I go into my squat, but it's closer to my glove for a transfer when I have to throw. It's closer to my glove to go behind a block. All right, so, I mean, very young age, Maybe just keep it behind the foot. They're not going to be stealing really. There's nobody leading. As they get older, it would be in the hip. Good question. What else we got? So primary. So the first stance, I'll just go back a little bit, is the sign giving stance. This is how they give signs. All right, because if you're the third base coach, you can't see my signs because of my glove. If my first base coach is over there, I kind of just tilt it. All right? You're tight there. You got your knees on this. Oh, yeah. I don't want anybody to see, so young kids will do this. Everybody in the park can see the sign, and they get down here. So when they're giving signals, right? Again, seven, eight, or nine, whatever, that's kind of young, but when they give signals, they want to be on the inseam of their pants. All right, knees are straight, so nobody can really see. All right, after that, they just go primary. So I want to open up. I'm always sitting up on a corner. Young kids, just let them sit down middle. Especially when the kids you know, start to pitch for the first year, let them sit up middle. But I'll open up my left foot, and I'll just Swivel on my right, and I'm on the corner. So that would be my primary stance right here. My bare hands behind my foot. Now if I go fastball away, or fastball in, and then I go to secondary, it's just a little wider with my left foot, and then my butt raises up, my middle stays there. So I split that corner. I tell the kids like a horse jockey. See, everybody see a horse race? They're like, yeah. That's kind of the position a secondary stance is. My feet are a little wider, the, the butt's up in the air. They're not used to it, they're gonna hate it. Get them off the couch, get them sitting in that stance for a whole commercial, get them used to it. What else? What do you Good. teach? What do you teach? Pitch down the middle, throw in the second. How do you teach to deal with the plate so they don't stand the plate? So, good question. So the plate, we should never go near the plate. So when we do when I do transfer exchange with my catchers, I just kind of drew a line right there. Or I do the thin one that slides, so that's instant feedback that they went too far. Remember, just mind you, there's a hitter there. If that hitter swings and they catch the ball and they come up and get hit, catch the interference, they get first. So they can't, shouldn't be going that far. So it would be a right foot, left foot, boom. So right there, my foot is barely touching that line, and then I'm letting it go. Once I let it go, I don't care where the feet go. But once that left foot lands, we don't want to be, mind you, they are wearing spikes. Whether it's rubber or metal and they get older, they st rubber spikes still slide on the plate. Slide on the plate, the ball's taken off. They have no control of where the ball's going. Um, we can go over a couple. Dan, can you give me a uh, transfer to change? So we'll go kneeling transfers. So we'll go no glove, just to isolate. Everything's happening in the middle of our body. The ball's over here. A lot of kids will do this, top heavy. We want to go, the ball's over here, we want to rake it to our midline. 
all the transfer happens at the midline. So we'll do this, kneeling transfer, isolate the lower half. Then we'll do, we'll put glove on two, they'll throw. And then we'll do secondary, slow footwork. So they start to feel the legs and the transfer at the same time. They'll be here, catch right, left. And we want to tell them to kind of gradually get taller. A lot of kids will just do this. And now my body and energy is going up to go out. We want to stay low to the ground and gradually get tall. Kind of, we do not want to take off like a helicopter, more so of an airplane. Here's my transfer, boom. And then after that, I'd be game speed. And you know, I'm not that fast anymore. But once that left foot lands, we can throw. A lot of kids will do. Now they're off balance. Now that left leg is going to be heavy by the time it lands. It's a waste of time. So it's a short right step, left step. Right foot, left foot. Once they get the foot down, then they can let it eat. Good question. It's a third. Another good question. So it depends. And this is more. More advanced, so I'm going to teach right now. If there's a right-handed hitter, and the ball's middle, middle in, I'm going to bring it with me and clear him with a drop step. If the ball's on the outside corner, I got to clear him. He owns that box. If I throw it into him, and the ball kicks into left field, everybody's still running. The ball's on the outside, I'm going to jab and clear him on the inside. Left-handed hitter, I got a clear lane. Left-handed hitter, I'm just going to bring it with me, cut that tight angle, and replace my feet. Boom, get rid of it. So there is a so when I do stuff with hitters, if I have two catchers, I'll have the off catcher standing in as a hitter. Full gear, just to give it more of a realistic feel for the catcher that's in there to have to move his feet and position himself to go to third. Would you change from the plate ball to runner on second? No. Same. No. Same spot wherever he's got to set up. If he's got enough distance from the hitter, so a little little thing, a lot of kids are too close. If they can do this and not be near the elbow, back elbow, they're fine. Um, they don't want to be too deep, and that they're too deep. The ball that's a strike that crosses the plate is a ball by the time it gets there. So they want to be in a good position. Uh, but to answer your question, no, it doesn't matter as long as they're in a consistent position for that hitter.